If I want to set up a pre-made breakout room, I'm going to go into my meeting. So I'm going to do this for my personal meeting ID. That way the spreadsheet will be available anytime I go into my personal meeting ID. I'm going to use a spreadsheet to upload the um, names of my students and their assigned breakout rooms. So in personal room, I'm going to go down to edit and then I'm going to scroll down and I want to turn on breakout rooms pre-assign. Now, if you do not see this as an option, what you need to make sure that you do first is go to your settings in Zoom. So I'm on the Zoom website at zoom.us. You're going to go to in meeting advanced and you want to make sure breakout rooms are turned on and check the box that allows the host to assign participants to the breakout room when scheduling. So I'm going to go back real quick to my personal meeting. Um, once I have that there, I can turn on breakout room pre-assign and I need to import from a CSV. So in order to import from a CSV, I am actually going to go to Infinite Campus to pull the data for my students. And um, right now, if you notice, I'm in last year, 1920, just because I have no students this year. So I wanted to actually be able to pull student data. So I right now am in um, the instruction view. I want to go into campus tools. So depending on what you have set as your default, um, you might need to switch over. So this is what campus tools looks like. On the left hand menu, I have a bunch of different things. I'm going to go into ad hoc reporting. Then I'm going to choose Filter Designer. And over here on the left, I have a bunch of filters that I've created over the years. You probably are not going to see all of these options. However, when I scroll down to the bottom, the one that I would like for you to go to is All Campus Users. So if you click on the plus on the left side, that will open up All Campus Users. Then I'm going to scroll down. And down at the bottom of this list, there's one that says student Zoom breakout rooms roster. Make a copy. Do not edit. Um, this is so every I've created this and shared this with everyone. And if you edit it and delete it or use this one and move it into your own, it is going to be gone for everyone else. So you're going to click on this. And what we need to do is make a copy. So right here where it says copy. You're going to click on that and it says it created a copy named copy of Zoom breakout rooms. Make a and then it just it cut off the end, but I'm going to say OK. And now that copy is in the top part in saved filter. So it's in your personal account. So you can use this, edit it as you like. Just please do not edit the one down at the bottom that was in the um, all campus users. So now what we need to do is I have that one clicked on and I need to edit it. So I'm going to um, make sure it's highlighted in blue and I'm going to choose edit. And what you might want to do is instead of say copy of, you could put your name just so you know that it's yours. And then I'm going to scroll down. Um, there are some kind of instructions here for you, but I'm going to, um, sorry, just scroll down on the page. And you can see that it's set up to save in your personal user account. So it's not being saved in other user groups, et cetera. It's saved just for you. I'm going to go down to the very bottom of the screen and it says next. So when I click on next, it looks like someone has made a copy already. Um, it should have my name here, but um, you can see it has a place for student last name, first name. Um, they're the teacher full name, so you're going to put your last name, comma, first name. And if you have like multiple um, names, sometimes it's hard to find the exact name, but it's the exact name that IC has for you, kind of like your full legal name. So if you find that this doesn't work when you go to run this in just a minute, um, you might need to play a little bit with your name or you can change this so to equals to you might be able to change it to something like sounds like um, you might need to um, play with that a little bit if you have multiple last names or something like that and it's not working. But everything else I'm just going to leave as is. Um, if I click next, this just kind of is a way to set up the formatting of the spreadsheet that we're going to get that we're going to need. 
Um, and I have it set up specifically so it will work when we import it into um, Zoom. So I'm just, I'm ready to go. Like all I needed to do was go in and add my name. So now what I'm going to choose is um, I can do save and test and that should give us the spreadsheet, but I normally just like to save it. So what I like to do after I save it, if I'm ever coming back to this later, if I need to reuse this, I just come to ad hoc reporting, click on that, and I'm going to go to data export, which is right here. And so I don't need to edit the file at all. I just need to export it. So I'm going to find where I put it, and it's going to be in my saved filters. It was the one that I put Hero Zoom Breakout Rooms. And then over here on the left, pick an export format. You need to choose a delimited value CSV because it wants a CSV file. So I'm going to click CSV file, and then I'm just going to choose export. And what it should be doing is taking all of my students and putting them into a spreadsheet. So here it is called Extract CSV. All right, so now that I have the document um, exported, I'm going to go over to my Google Spreadsheets. And I'm going to open up a brand new spreadsheet. I'm going to go to File, Import, and Upload. And I have it right here down at the bottom where I can just drag and drop it. And then it asks me some questions. Do I want to create a new spreadsheet, replace a spreadsheet, etc.? I'm just going to do replace, detect automatically, and yes, keep it just as is, and then import my data. Now, what it did is it gave me a list of students, and this is actually, I believe, every student at Caramont, um, just because I had all of them on my course load last year. Um, through extra things I was doing, so we're just going to ignore that I have a couple thousand students in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm going to leave their names here, but the reason I want the names in this view is so that I can put them into groups. If I just saw their email addresses, which is what we need for the import, I wouldn't know who's who. So in the pre-assigned room columns, make sure you do not change any of these header names. Okay, leave them as is. But in the um, columns here, I'm going to put down like period one, breakout, like period one, room one. I can make this a little bigger if I need to see it. But I'm going to assign maybe four students per room. And then I'm going to do period one, room two and I'm not doing it very randomly but I'm just going to um, keep doing this oh let's see I wanted this room two room two room two so go ahead and just assign all your rooms um, next like for the next period I might do period two room one etc the reason I'm doing all periods in this is that then in my personal meeting room that I'm using for all my class periods, all the kids are assigned rooms. You might have empty rooms during second period. No one's going to be in the first period rooms. Um, just note that you have 50 breakout rooms total. So you probably can't have all of your students in pairs because if you have a hundred and over a hundred students, you're not going to be able to put them in pairs into 50 rooms. So just know that if you're doing this for all of your classes into one meeting room, um, you can only have a total of 50 rooms. So once I have gone through and done all this, um, I am going to make a copy of this spreadsheet. So imagine I had finished all of this. I'm going to make a copy of this spreadsheet because when we go to import into Zoom, we only need columns A and B. But I want to keep this spreadsheet so that when I change up my groups later, I don't have to re-go to IC and do this whole process. I can just use this spreadsheet. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and where it says extract, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call this like master list. Then I'm going to click on the little arrow next to master list and I'm going to duplicate. And so now I have copy of master list. I'm going to then rename this and this might be like September groups. And this is what I'm going to import into 
um, Zoom. And in Zoom, I do not need columns C through G. So I'm going to highlight them. And then I can click on this arrow and I can delete these columns. So and I'm also going to delete all the extra kids because I don't really need that right now. Um, so just for my example, I just have these nine kids that are going to be assigned into uh, my pre-assigned breakout rooms. So I have a column that's pre-assigned room name and email address. Again, do not change the names of these columns or your import is not going to work. So now what I need to do is just export this one sheet, the September groups, as a CSV file. So I'm going to be sure that I'm clicked on the September groups. I'm going to go to File, I'm going to Download as a CSV file, uh, comma separated values, dot CSV, and it says current sheet. So it's not taking the master list, it's taking the current sheet that I'm currently in, which is September groups. So let me go back to download, CSV, and it's going to download this onto my computer. Now, I'm gonna go over to my Zoom, and in my Zoom account, when I go into edit my meeting, okay, I wanna pre-assign breakout rooms, I'm going to choose import from CSV and I can drag and drop or browse and choose my file and I can see that I have um, these different students or these different participants in the different rooms. When they get into Zoom, I will see their names in the breakout rooms so that I can move them around if I need to. If kids are absent and things like that, I could rearrange if I need to. Um, but when you're doing the pre-assignment, the only thing you can put is email. So you can see here it says assign participants by adding their email. Um, so again, you can only create 50 breakout rooms and up to a total of 200 participants. So right now I have three rooms with nine participants because that's what I up, um, imported. And then all I have to do is press save. And then I want to make sure that I save my meeting itself. So the first save was to save the pre-assigned breakout rooms with my three rooms. Now I need to save my meeting settings. All right, so right now I am currently in a Zoom meeting, the one that I had pre-assigned people to be in my breakout rooms. And so I um, pre-assigned my personal account to be in the meeting, so that's what this other um, account is over here on the left. Um, so that would be like one of your students, and hopefully you'd have more than one student in your class if you're gonna be using breakout rooms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to breakout rooms down at the bottom of my screen. And you'll see here that I have breakout rooms. These are the pre-assigned rooms. I had four rooms set up. Um, and you'll only see that only one person is in a room, and that's me. Um, well, it's my other me over here on this left. And so all the other rooms are empty because those students happen to be absent today. But what I could do is um, I could rearrange. If I had other people who had joined in, they would probably be up at the top as unassigned, and I can assign them if I missed someone for some reason. Um, but then I can open all rooms and send everyone into the rooms for the breakout room. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And they're all pushed into breakout rooms. And I can pop in if I want to, to go to a breakout room. So I could join breakout room one. And then I could go check in with the students or the one student who happens to be in that room. Here is what the um, window looks like. It got moved to my other monitor just now. Um, but then when I'm in a breakout room, I can click on breakout rooms and I can jump and join to any of the other breakout rooms down here at the bottom. Students will see an icon down at the bottom of their breakout room screen that will tell them um, to ask for help. And it will prompt them to basically um, request the teacher to join their class. So you'll see a little pop up when that occurs. If you want to broadcast a message to everyone, this will go to each breakout room. You can't have any links in it. They can't respond. It only shows up on the top of their screen for a few minutes. I did have breakout rooms on a timer. Um, but up at the top, you'll notice that when I'm in a breakout room, it tells me period one, room one. So um, students will see that and you'll see that when you're in that room. Now I'm going to close the breakout rooms and go back to the main room. And everyone's going to go back. And we are now here in the main session. So 
Um, if I wanted to go back into breakout rooms, I can click breakout rooms here and I could open all rooms as I had them before. Um, the options where you can choose time limits are over here on the left. I like to move participants automatically so they don't have to press the button to move because sometimes that gets hidden behind other windows. Um, you might not want to allow students to return to the main session. This is where you can choose a time and it will show a timer in the breakout room up at the top so students know how long they need to be in the room. It's a good way for time management. So you can set that to whatever you want it to be for the particular task. You notice I had a pop up that said, you know, the breakout rooms are over. What do you want to do? Do you want to bring everyone back or leave them in breakout rooms? I like that option. You can give them a countdown timer after the breakout room so that way they can finish up any last sentences or any last things they need to say, maybe 15 seconds, and then they'll be um, pulled back if you have the countdown timer on. Now, if I want to reuse these rooms, I'm good. I could also move the people in rooms to different rooms so I can go and move me to a different room, move the other me to a different room. Um, so this is great um, if students again come in late or get dropped out they might be when they come back in show up as unassigned up at the top and then you can assign them into a particular room then what you can also do is choose recreate now let's say that you use this on monday with your students and you had a couple of students absent then on tuesday you come you don't necessarily want to use the rooms from Monday. You want it to match the spreadsheet that you uploaded because you only made those small changes based on absences or whatever. But you know that there's always like students that are absent or students that get missed. So you want to go back to your original spreadsheet. So you're going to choose recover to pre-assigned rooms. And that's going to put them back into their original spot. And so it says, do you want to recover to pre-assign rooms? All existing rooms will be replaced. I'm going to say yes. And now everything's back to um, what it was. But again, all the other students that I pre-assigned are currently not here. So that's why we're not seeing them. But it reassigned. You'll notice that I was in this bottom room and now I'm back in room one. If you happen to want to do random rooms just to mix things up, you can click recreate recreate all rooms and it's going to replace all existing rooms that you currently have so the ones that you see in this window up here and I can choose to do it um, automatically randomly all that sort of stuff so I'm going to recreate and there's only one breakout room now if I want to go back to my pre-assigned you go to recreate recreate or sorry recover to pre-assigned rooms you say yes that you want to recreate and you'll be back to your spreadsheet view so that's how you're going to navigate with the spreadsheets and change things up if you happen to want to move things around and remember you can move students anywhere you want you can delete rooms you could add a room you could rename a room Maybe it's a one on one room where you want to pull a student one on one to you can add that and then go and pull that student out to have an individual conversation and then put them back into whatever room um, they came from. So you have lots of different options. So I'm going to go ahead and open all rooms and just show you where you'll see that countdown timer. So I forgot to show you that before. All right, so everyone's in rooms now. I'm going to go and join that room so I can see what it looks like inside of a breakout room. And um, when I'm in the breakout room, you'll notice that there is a timer. So students see this remaining time and you do too when you're in a breakout room. And as a teacher, if I leave and go back to um, the, a different room, I can, I'm going to go to leave. I'm now back in my main room and I also see the timer here and I see it on my breakout room menu here, but I can close rooms at any time, even before the timer goes off. And I got this pop up. I'm going to say close now. And I think I had it set for 15 seconds for students to just come back and they're all going to come back at those 15 seconds unless they choose to come back early. And we should see students, my fake student coming back anytime now. There we go.
So um, 15 seconds are up and everyone's back in the main room. If you want to change up your groups, you just need to go back to your spreadsheet, go back to the master list, change up the room names. Um, to help you, you probably are going to want to sort by section schedule, which is the class periods. That's going to make it easier for you to see the periods that students are assigned to and assign the room names again, duplicate it again, and you'll have a copy, rename it to your next set of group names, delete everything other than column A and B, and then you're going to do the file download as a CSV file, comma, separated value. And so I'm going to do my October groups. And then you're just going to go back into your Zoom personal meeting or the one that you're using the uh, meeting, the pre-signed breakout rooms for. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to go to the breakout rooms and it, I'm going to choose edit for the pre-assign down at the bottom left. I'm going to click import from CSV, drag and drop the file. And now I have my new assignments. I press save and I'm ready to go with my new updated list when I decide to change up my groups.